In this video, we take a look at confidence intervals, known as CIs for short, for quantitative, also known as numerical data. With the same methods that we use sample proportions to construct confidence intervals to estimate population proportions for categorical data, we can use sample means to construct confidence intervals to estimate population means for quantitative numerical data. The 2009 holiday retail season, which kicked off the day after Thanksgiving, had been marked by somewhat lower self-reported consumer spending than was seen during the comparable period in 2008. This drop was attributed to the recession. To get an estimate of consumer spending, 436 randomly sampled American adults were surveyed. Daily consumer spending averaged $84.71, so that's our sample mean. The standard deviation was $45.94, and the standard error was calculated to be 220. Here's the histogram from this survey. So we see our x-axis is measuring the daily spending, and this is just during the holiday season, uh, not all year long. So we expect higher spending right before the holidays. Uh, this has a right tail, and then uh, the peak spending appears to be somewhere between $50 to $100 a day. So we want to see over here how they calculated that standard error of $2.20. So they use the fact that our sample size n is 436. Our standard deviation, uh, this is a sample standard deviation, so it should be an s. Uh, it looks like I wrote s above the sigma. Uh, it would be sigma if it was a population, but since it's just a sample, we use s, uh, is $45.94. So to find the standard error, we take our sample standard deviation, $45.94, and divide it by the square root of 436. And so when we round, we get $2.20 for our standard error. So part A asks us to estimate the true population average daily consumer spending for 2008 using a 90% confidence interval and to interpret this interval in context. So for the 90% confidence level, we use Z, our critical value, uh, is 1.645. So our interval is going to be constructed by taking our sample mean X bar, symbolically, and adding and subtracting 1.645 times the standard error for that. So we know our sample mean is $84.71, and our standard error is $2.20. So we go ahead and plug those in to our confidence interval formula here. And when we multiply 1.645 times 220, we get $3.62. So remember, we're using 1.645 here because we want 90% confident. We know 90% confidence is somewhere between 1 and 2 standard deviations, and we saw we can find that it is exactly 1.645 standard uh, deviations or standard errors in this case. So to find our lower limit and our upper limit, we're going to take 84.71 and add and subtract $3.62. When we subtract, the lower limit is $81.09, and when we add, the upper limit is $88.33. So to interpret, we put together a sentence. In our sentence, we want to explain that 90% is how confident or how sure we are uh, with our calculations. We want to explain that we're predicting an uh, average for the whole population, and then we want to give the range of values. So the sentence I wrote here is that we are 90% confident in our calculations that the average daily consumer spending for 2008 is between $81.09 to $88.33. Now we want to do a similar calculation, but for 99% confidence. So since we are using 99% confidence, we have Z equals 2.576. Uh, this says here from page 179, the page is probably a little different from when I wrote this out, so if you uh, want to find the z value, you have to go back a few pages. So our structure for the confidence interval still starts with our sample mean, $84.71, but we're going to add and subtract 2.576 times the standard error because now we're 99% confident, and so that's between 2 and 3 standard errors. So 2.576 times the 220, our standard error, gives us a 567. So to find our interval, we're going to take 84.71 and add and subtract the $5.67. That $5.67, we could call that the margin of error, because that's how much we're going to add and subtract from the sample mean, 
and the simple mean you can think about that as the center of our interval and we subtract and add the margin of error to find the lower limit and the upper limit. So when we subtract 8471 subtract uh, 567 gives us the lower limit of 7904 and when we add 8471 plus 567 gives us the upper limit of $90.38. So this interval is wider. We have a lower lower limit and a higher upper limit because we are more confident. So at the 90% confidence level, we're less confident, so our interval is a bit narrower. So to put this all together with a sentence, we say that we are 99% confident in our calculations that the average daily consumer spending for 2008 is between $79.04 and $90.38.